Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Who sing to thee, Alleluia. 
whatsoever he hath willed, he hath done. Saying, O soul, son of God, who was circumcised in the flesh, who sing to thee, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Thank you. 
and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are completed in him, who is the head of every principality and authority, in whom you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, but by the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh, in the circumcision of Christ, having been buried together with him in the baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith of the operation of God, who raised him from the dead. Peace be to thee that readest. And he was 
given in the name of Jesus. So why is this important? Certainly, the secular world out there, if you told anyone this morning that you were coming to church to celebrate the circumcision of the Lord, you may have gotten a few funny looks. Why would you? Why, why is that a feast? Well, it's very important for us to understand what his circumcision means for us. And we hear a little bit about that in the gospel. We hear it in Paul's letter to the Colossians, which we heard this morning. And so, certainly, we know that according to the custom we hear in the, the gospel this morning, that on the eighth day, he was, he was brought to that he was circumcised and was given the name Jesus. And we even keep this custom today in the Orthodox Church. On the eighth day, there are naming prayers that can be said for a newborn baby. <coughs> certainly, in our custom in the American culture, we, we have to give a name when the child is born because they need something to put on the birth certificate. But the child is named in the eyes of God on the eighth day. The name. And this is something that we keep even to this day. But our Lord in his humanity, and for all humanity, who of course we know came into the flesh, God became incarnate for all humanity so that man could know God. And we say all the time that he came to fulfill the scriptures. He came to fulfill the law, the old covenant. But in fulfilling the law, he must also partake the law. And so he was circumcised on the eighth day. And it's important for us to understand what circumcision in the old law meant. Because that is the symbol by which you were set apart. By which males were set apart as members of God's kingdom. And we, we read about this in Joshua. That Joshua, when he brought his people over, circumcised them with a knife of stone. And so this is... This is the, the covenant that God gave his people Israel, that you would be circumcised. And that is the mark that makes you part of God's kingdom. And so Christ, certainly being of God's kingdom, came to fulfill the law. And he in the flesh received the mark under the Jewish law of the old covenant to be circumcised so that he could fulfill the scriptures. And we hear in the hymns that the sins of mortality, the sins of the flesh were cut off and we were made new. And what's interesting is that we hear that this is the sign of the old covenant, but what is the sign of the new covenant? What is the sign of the new covenant that we become marked, marked for Christ, that we become members of Christ? It is our baptism. So St. Paul's epistle in his letter to the Colossians draws those two together. Talks about the circumcision and the baptism. And it's not a coincidence that here in just a few days we celebrate the Theophany of Christ. Because the circumcision, that which was of the old covenant, is renewed in the baptism. You see, we die with him in baptism. And we are raised with him in baptism. And we understand this. And in Colossians, he says in verses 9 through 12, there's no need for circumcision of the flesh anymore because we are circumcised with the Spirit in His baptism. And so this connection between the circumcision of Christ and baptism is very important for us. So as we come together to celebrate the naming of the Lord on the eighth day in His circumcision, we have to understand that we are coming together to celebrate the fulfillment of the Old Covenant, that which God had given to his, the Israel people. The fulfillment of the Old Covenant because we are partakers in the New Covenant in Christ. Christ perfectly fulfills the law and he is circumcised under the law. And, it, and it, the fathers say, he who without blemish of sin took on flesh and submitted to the remedy by which sinful flesh had been made clean under the law. Circumcision was the remedy by which flesh had been made clean under the law. So he submitted to it. And we understand that baptism is the new law. So I wanted to read, the reason I brought this book, is I wanted to read a little bit about what uh, St. Cyril of Alexandria says about this commenting on just the first two verses of what we read in the Gospels. He 
It says, after Jesus' of circumcision, the rite was abolished by the introduction of baptism, of which circumc circumcision was a type. For this reason, we are no longer circumcised. It seems to me that circumcision achieved three distinct ends. This is very important. In the first place, it separated the descendants of Abraham by a sort of sign and seal and distinguished them from all other nations. Second, it prefigured in itself the grace and efficacy of divine baptism. Formerly, a male was circumcised and included among God's people by the virtue of that seal. Nowadays, a person is baptized and is formed in itself Christ the Be becomes a member of God's adopted family. Third, circumcision is the symbol of the faithful when they are embraced in grace. And as they are cut away and mortify the tumultuous rising of carnal pleasures and passions by the sharp surgery of faith and by ascetic labors, they do this not by cutting the body, but by purifying the heart. Circumcision of the spirit that St. Paul talks about is the purification of the heart that we receive in Christ. They do this by being circumcised in spirit and not in the letter. Their praise, as St. Paul testifies, needs not the sentence of any human tribunal, any human ritual, but depends upon the decree from above, that is, from the Holy Spirit. And so St. Cyril puts plainly the answer why it is the church comes together on the eighth day to celebrate Christ's circumcision and his name. And of course, his name was given as Jesus, which means Savior. And so we hear in the dismissal we hear today, we hear in the hymns who was circumcised in the flesh for our salvation. His circumcision under the law, his incarnation was for our salvation. And everything that we do points to our salvation. And it's interesting that the gospel then that we hear this morning goes on and it talks about Christ as a young boy. That actually skips ahead several verses. And so we put these two together in this reading this morning. If you were to read the gospel straight through, there's a gap there before we get to this discussion of Christ um, as a child. And it says that he grew in stature and wisdom. And of course, Christ in his divine, in his divinity, certainly can't grow in wisdom. There's not wisdom that God and his divinity does not have. The fathers talk about this, and then talk about how Christ it grew in his stature and his wisdom, his wisdom, because in his humanity, he was a young boy. And so although he had all the wisdom of God the Father, because he is God, he grew in his stature and the wisdom grew with him. This is for us to understand that as we are baptized, when we come into the faith, we are baptized. We are very young in the faith. And as we grow in our life, we grow in wisdom and we receive that from the faith. Just as Christ, as a young boy, grew in stature, aged as a young boy, and therefore grew in wisdom, that it was attained in accordance with the stature of the Father's time. These two things are put together so that we understand the connection between the circumcision and our baptism and the growth that we have in the faith throughout our life. So, when you leave today, and someone asks what you did on New Year's Eve morning, and you say, I went to church to celebrate the circumcision of our Lord, now you can tell them why the church celebrates the circumcision of our Lord. It is because it is for our salvation. It is for our salvation that He came and fulfilled the old law, so that we may be received in a new life in baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, who dwellest in the heavens and lookest down upon all thy works, look upon thy servants, the catechumens, who have bowed their necks before thee, and grant them the light yoke. Make them honorable members of thy holy church, and make them worthy of the labor of regeneration the remission of sins, and the robe of incorruption unto knowledge of thee, our true God, that with us they may glorify the more honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace, wisdom, 
that thou art always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
All of you and all Orthodox Christian believers, may the Lord God remember you all in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father in Metropolitan Saba and all our brotherhood in Christ, may the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages. its president, civil authorities, and armed forces. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> All those who remembering the Lord God remember his kingdom. Grant mercy, life, peace, health, health, salvation, visitation to all the families of this holy community, and especially the servants of God, Amo, Omema, Stuart, Leo, Basil, Maria, Helen, Dorothy, Kim, Mother Thecla, the Asensio family, and Isabel and Ariella Mary, Marilyn and the Hatfield family, and especially Serafina and the new, newly born child of God, Oscar, Ekaterina, Cindy, Maria, and the subdeacon John, and all those in affliction and suffering around the world. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The servants of God departed this life before us in hope of res the resurrection and life eternal. Emil, Bassam, Anatoly, Yuri, Rima, Robert, and Bob. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.
through the compassion zone, through the compassion of thine only begotten Son, whom thou art blessed, together with thy all holy and good and life giving spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst.
that it speak unto us by the mouths of thy servants and prophets, who foretold unto us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us the law as an aid, that is to appoint guardian angels. And when the fullness of time was come, thou didst speak unto us through thy Son himself, by whom also thou madest the, the ages, who being the brightness of thy glory and the express image of thy person and upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, to God and Father. But though he was God before all the ages, yet he appeared upon earth and dwelt among men, and was incarnate of all the virgin, and emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, becoming conformed to the body of our lowliness, that he might make us conformable to the image of his glory. For by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death. So it seemed good and un good unto thine only begotten Son, who is the bosom of thee, the God and Father, to be born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary, to be born under the law, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in Christ by Christ. And becoming a citizen of this world and giving commandments of salvation, he released us from the delusion of idols, and brought us into knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, having won us into himself for his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and having purified us by water, and having sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself a ransom to death, whereby we were held as souls into bondage and sin. And having descended into Hades through the cross, that he might fulfill all things with himself, he loosed the pains of death and rose again on the third day, making a way for all flesh unto the resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the author of life should be held by corruption, that he might be the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn from the dead, that he might be in all things the first among all. Ascending into heaven, he sat at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he shall come again to render unto every man according to his works, and he hath left us as the memorials of the saving passions, these things which we have set forth according to his commandments. For when he was about to go into his, into his voluntary and memorable and life-giving death, in the night in which he gave himself up to the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and immaculate hands, and when, when he had shown it unto the, the God and Father, and given thanks, and blessed it, and hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Amen.
both of them are still their treasury to every good thing. Maintain their marriage bonds in peace and comfort. Rear the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint heart. Collect the scattered, return them from their wandering astray. And unite them to the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. Set at liberty those who are vexed by unclean spirits. Travel with those who journey by land and sea and air. Defend the widows, protect the orphans. Free the captives, heal the sick, and be mindful of God. Of those who are under judgment in the mines and exile, in bitter servitude, in every tribulation, necessity of nature. And all who beseech thy life, yep, thy great loving kindness, and be mindful of the Lord our God. Of those who love us, and those who hate us, and those who have enjoined us, and worthy that we be, to pray for them and all the white people, and upon them all pour out thy rich mercy, granting to all their petitions, which is unto salvation, and those whom we have through ignorance and forgiveness for the multitude of names have not remembered. Do thou thyself remember, O God, and knowest the time of life and name of each, and knowest every man, even from his mother's womb. For thou, O Lord, art the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the storm tossed, the haven of the void, the physician of the sick. Do thou thyself all things to all men. O thou who knowest every man, his petition, his dwelling place, and his deed. Deliver, O Lord, this city and every city and countryside from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, the sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. Among the first, be mindful, O Lord, of our Father, Metropolitan Saba, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And the Thou hast prepared for those who love thee, O Lord, 
and God safe master that would fold us in without condemnation, we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.
before January 1st that these states have been able to break. So um, thank you all for being uh, with us this morning, for celebrating and worshiping with us, and certainly participating in uh, the circumcision of our Lord that occurred on the eighth day uh, for our salvation. We will be saved when two or three are gathered together in his name. He is with us. So thank God um, for all of you. And may the Lord bless all of us in the year to come in 2024. We have so much to look forward to. We have so much to be thankful for. Um, and I just know that the Lord is going to do wonderful things for us um, in the year to come. So uh, this week we have a pseudo normal schedule. So we have um, Wednesday daily vespers, right, Buna? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll update the website today. Maybe. So we have daily vespers on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and then on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. we have um, the festal divine liturgy for uh, the feast of Theophany. But Buna, we're not. Are we doing oracles again? No, or just just, just, or, just liturgy. Okay. So 10 a.m. divine liturgy. Um, that is one of the 12 major feasts of the church. Um, so please do all that you can to be with us. We will do uh, the blessing of the water that, that morning as well. This is the custom on Theophany. So that's Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And then Sunday is a normal uh, Sunday with our fourth rows at 9 a.m. So um, I pray that uh, this first week of 2024 is a blessed one and we are able to be together many times to worship. So please. Father's Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. 